Hey fellow babies, welcome back to Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. I'm Michael Pactor, your host. Uh, we are especially thankful for the patronage from our Patreon patrons, thank you, and from our YouTube subscribers. You guys are getting this real time. We also offer the content real time to anybody who's a Twitch Prime member who can remember to link their Twitch Prime account to their Amazon Prime account. There's instructions in the show description below, but you've got to do that every so often, every month or so. So if you're watching this and you haven't done it in a while, please check out the instructions. Pretty easy, a couple of clicks and you'll be linked. It costs you nothing and you get our content real time. So Amazon is gonna pay for it. You're already paying for this as part of Amazon Prime. Stick it to them, make them pay for it. Today's question comes from Damp, Towelman, and Tarma. Uh, Sony released Concord in August, but due to low sales and player counts, it completely shut the game down and refunded everybody within two weeks of release. Should Sony, <laughs> Should Sony have seen this coming? What a great question. Uh, was buying its developer Firewalk before its release a good idea? What's the future of the studio? Some reports state that the game costs over 400 million to make. If so, could a colossal mistake like this get executive fired? Should PlayStation be questioning its games as a service strategy? The typical game studio has 200 employees. A big studio has 400. Um, you, you guys will find some data that says Rockstar is 1900, but that's spread across five studios. So a real studio, 400 is hard to manage, but that happens. So let's go with that. I don't know Firewalk, so they might have 400 employees. The average pay in the industry is 100,000 a year. So 400 employees cost 40 million bucks a year. So to get to 400 million, you have to have a game in development for 10 years. Now again, I was unaware of Firewalk before Concord, um, and I don't know if they worked on it 10 years, but I find that hard to believe. The average game takes somewhere between three and five years of development, and I'm talking normal games, not, not Grand Theft Auto. Um, startup concepts can take six or seven sometimes for the first one, so I'd even go with that. But this is more likely 200, 250 people six years, seven years, so 150 million, 175 million. That's more likely what it costs. Okay, regardless of that, you know, Sony refunded everything, so they made zero. Um, so that's bad, you lose money. Should somebody get fired? I don't know, Sony's a big multi-billion dollar corporation. Are people allowed to make $150 million mistakes? Not twice. So is, did the guy who greenlit this game, you know, do it three other times and this is his last straw? Maybe, I doubt it. Should Sony have seen this coming? Boy, what a great question. Um, look, shooter games, we've got premium shooter games, you know, Call of Duty and Battlefield, and then we've got, and Halo, and then we've got a bunch. And we have free to play shooter games. And the problem is we don't have paid games as a service shooter games. You have the bolt on, you know, Call of Duty Warzone or Call of Duty Mobile for mobile. Um, but man, it's, it's really hard to offer somebody up a games as a service, free to play style shooter game and then ask for 40 bucks to get in. And we have free to play shooter games, Valorant, you know, I mean, there, there, there are plenty. Um, so I don't really think Sony should have been surprised because there's been ex examples of good free to play shooters out there for a long time. And you know, not that Fortnite or Apex Legends are, are shooter games, but again, they have shooting components. There's plenty of stuff to do for free. So if you really wanna charge somebody 40 bucks or 50 or 60 or 70, but 40 bucks, you better give them $40 worth of stuff. And I think that what happened was gamers didn't respond because it wasn't planned well. Should Sony have seen it coming? Yeah. I mean, you're supposed to beta test this stuff and you're supposed to get the gamer's perspective and find out if they think that it's worth spending the money on and clearly this was not. So, you know, will the game get reinvented as a free to play experience? I'm sure it will. Um, will they shut the studio down? I'm sure they won't. I mean, I think that they'll keep the studio going. Should they have bought the studio before they release the game? Clearly, Sony believes in the IP. They actually think that it's something that's interesting and fun. And maybe it is interesting and fun as a free-to-play game. I think where, where Sony is in a pickle is that the company is a, a single-player game publisher. You know, that's been the core 
offering from Sony. And they're a single player studio or, or developer in a multiplayer world. Now that doesn't mean single player games don't have their place, of course they do, and there's always gonna be demand for them. But Sony is seeing the growth of the industry in multiplayer and free to play, which they call live service. And they're like, okay, we're multiplayer and free to play, but they're not, they're not good at it. And I, I would say the analogy is Sony Motion Pictures to Disney, right? Sony Motion Pictures is the king of the romantic comedy, $50 million films that do 50 million box office. And Disney is the studio of the blockbuster, you know, Frozen and uh, uh, Avengers. And I mean, they've got a whole bunch of billion dollar, Avatar, they've got a whole bunch of billion dollar franchises. Sony can say we want to do that, but they don't have the intellectual property to support that. So the game studios, same thing. Um, you can't just say, here we are, we're live services, and yet that's what Sony has done. Um, they bought Bungie because somehow they convinced themselves that Bungie with one multiplayer free-to-play game, Destiny, it's not really free, but sort of free, could transform the whole company and now they're laying off people at Bungie. Um, I don't think Sony has the first clue what they're doing. I mean, I think that's the right answer. So when you ask, should executives be fired? Executives should be fired for running the company the way they're running it. I mean, they need to change their outlook. And I think Sony manages by looking in the rearview mirror, this is what happened in the last five cycles, this is gonna happen in the next cycle, and they're not right. It's different, the world has changed. So if they wanna be the console seller, single player game experience, they will continue to do fine, and they will continue to sell 15 million PlayStation 5s a year, and they will continue to collect software royalties, that's like running a movie theater business. You know, there will always be movies and people will always go, but it's a declining model. It's not going away, but it's a declining model. If they want to participate in the future, in the film analogy, it's Netflix. You know, it's, it's streaming subscription services or YouTube videos or TikTok. It's free, free to play. It's really the way the games industry is, is evolving. They're not equipped yet. To, to manage that business. And so this was an effort for them to try to get into it. Uh, it was, I'm gonna use your words here, a colossal mistake. They don't know what they're doing. Um, should they be questioning their service game strategy? Yes. Um, the skill set required to do free to play games is different from the skill set required to make a single player game. And again, sticking with my movie analogy, the guy who creates a two hour movie that's three acts, you know, beginning, middle, end, is a different creator than the guy who creates Breaking Bad. That is, you know, 10 or 15 episodes with a plot point at the end that's a cliffhanger and you can't wait for next season and it runs for six seasons. That's a different skill set. You know, doing 60 or 70 episodes of Breaking Bad is way different than doing a two hour movie. Sony is the master of, in games of the two hour movie analogy and everybody else is really good at the 60, 70 episode series. So they've got to hire different people. They've got to make different acquisitions. I believe they thought Firewalk would be that one, but of course they decided to apply the old model, sell it to you for 40 bucks to the new business, live service, and they just screwed it up. So. Answer is, yeah, they should fire a lot of people. Um, yeah, they should rethink their games as a service strategy. And uh, yeah, they made a colossal mistake. Uh, you can sell a $40 game if you get everything. That's like FIFA Ultimate Team was part of FIFA. You can sell a $40 game if everybody gets everything. It's the gotcha. It's the after you launch the game, now if I want to advance my hero or get the weapons or do whatever, I've got to unlock them and I got to spend money and people hate that. So. You know, Helldivers was a great game. There's still a place for games that have ongoing DLC. They all point at, oh, well, you know, EA got lucky with FIFA Ultimate Team. Well, maybe, except they actually figured out that people would keep playing and would spend money. Take-Two got lucky with, with Grand Theft Auto Online. Well, maybe, except they they put made it fun, you know, and did, did, uh, did uh, Activision get lucky with Call of Duty Warzone? No, they figured out what they had to do to get more people engaged. It was smart. So I, I'm absolutely confident that Sony needs to change over uh, a lot of their executives and start thinking about the business differently. 
I am not down on the live services strategy. Do it if you've got a way to implement it, but you can't have the same team and say, okay, it's sort of, to me, it's like the San Francisco 49ers going, okay, we're gonna get into it, into the NBA and we're gonna have an NBA team made of 49er players. It just won't work. Like I'm sure that there are some phenomenal athletes on that team, right, who could, who could probably play really well in, in basketball. They'd still get their asses kicked if they played you know, the worst NBA team. And it just, it's the same thing. It's like it's a different sport and Sony is trying to do the, a different sport with the same personnel, just dumb. How much does it cost to convert it to free to play? Nothing. I mean, they can they can absolutely do that. It's the problem is with all free to play. Managing the economy in the game is hard, and so like probably the developer I respect the most is Vince Zampella, as far as his savvy and understanding of the consumer, and they can't get season passes right in Apex Legends. And I don't mean that they suck. I mean they're uneven. So they'll see their revenues fluctuate by 15, 20% because they don't give people enough to do in a season pass. It is a skill. It's hard to do. And so will the Firewalk team get it right with Concord? I don't know. I don't know them, I really don't. So let's see what happens. But I, my expectation is they're gonna try because they've got the sunk cost of, of this 175 million in development or whatever that number really is, it's not 400 million. Why not try to monetize it and if they can maybe make 50 million a year for the next five years, they'll get their investment back. Why not? So I think they'll try. Thanks for joining us on Pactor Factor. Uh, again, if you are a Patreon patron or a YouTube subscriber, we very much appreciate your patronage. Um, if you can, please link your Twitch Prime account to your Amazon Prime account. You will be sticking it to Amazon. You have already paid them. They took your money and they're gonna give some of it to us if you just remember to link those accounts. So do it because Shane needs to buy gas. He's not gonna be able to get home tonight in traffic for two hours unless you, unless you get him at least a gallon of gas. Uh, so thank you again for joining us. We will see you next week.